A senior advisor to the Iranian Supreme Leader told Al Jazeera that Iran is technically capable of making a nuclear bomb, but had not decided whether to build one. This comes after Biden's four-day trip to the Middle East, where he vowed to stop Iran from acquiring a nuclear weapon. Professor, author, and executive vice president at the Quincy Institute, Trita Parsi, is with us to discuss. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. So do you think this comment is accurate and Iran, in fact, is capable of making a nuclear weapon but has not decided to greenlight such a project? Yes, this is already what we have known. This is uh, aligning itself quite accurately with what the U.S. intelligence agencies as well as other intelligence agencies have said, which is that at this point, the Iranians have enough 60 percent enriched uranium to be able to build one nuclear weapon. They may actually have a bit more. Uh, whether they then, of course, have the full technical capability of going through all the tests and everything else remains to be seen. The question is not whether they have it. We knew they did. The question is why the senior advisor to the Iranian Supreme Leader decided to give an interview in which he stated this. What kind of signal is he trying to send with this statement? And so what is the answer to that question, Dr. Parsi? What is the signal he's sending? I think the signal they're sending is that as the, by, uh, President Biden has gone to the Middle East, they've been talking a lot about organizing the Middle East against Iran, isolating Iran, containing Iran, talk about the Iranian threat. This is a typical counter response by the Iranians, which is that if you're going to treat Iran like a threat, then Iran actually is going to be more threatening. Uh, and moreover, mindful of the way that the nuclear talks have stalled, uh, the Iranians are reminding the United States that if the United States uh, is not showing flexibility, uh, just as much as Biden recently said that he would be open to using military force if the Iranians don't come back into the agreement fully, the Iranians are sending a similar message to the United States saying, if the United States doesn't come back into the agreement, which Biden hasn't done since Trump left, then Iran has the capability of going to the bomb. It seems like we're going down familiar pathways here. Our stated goal, prevent Iran from getting a nuclear weapon. Uh, our, our likely accomplishment, uh, make, them, make it more likely that they're reasonable for them to pursue a policy of acquiring a nuclear weapon because of our diplomatic or strategic blundering. Is that fair? I think yes, and the big mystery is here is how come the Biden administration seems to have completely forgotten how to conduct effective diplomacy, uh, mindful of the fact that Biden was the vice president when Obama actually did conduct effective diplomacy, at least in the case of Iran. Uh -huh. The manner in which the Biden administration has pursued this is quite dramatically different from that of uh, the choice of the Obama administration, from everything to uh, creating the atmospherics, the manner in which the president is much more comfortable talking about the military threat. These are very, very different rhetorical tools uh, and diplomatic tools that Biden administration is using compared to the Obama administration. And the difference, of course, is Obama was successful and thus far Biden has not been successful. Well, right. Dr. Parsi, couldn't somebody argue that the Middle East is simply a different place than when President Obama was in office? I mean, in a sort of post-Abraham Accords world where you have um, a new anti-Iran alliance forming between Israel, the UAE, and pretty soon probably Saudi Arabia as well, that the old tool book is just no longer relevant because the Middle East has shifted so much. Well, the Middle East has shifted a little bit, but the Abrams Accord is actually the old toolbox. It's the old toolbox in which we're creating blocks in the region, we're taking sides, we're dividing the region, and by that we're cementing conflict. Uh, what the Obama administration did through multilateral diplomacy, in the case of Iran at least, is that they open up the pathway to actually be able to resolve these tensions rather than cementing them. It's a mystery to me as to why the Biden administration has decided to continue the legacy of the Trump administration in the Middle East, which has been the Abrams support, rather than go back to the manner in which the uh, Obama administration actually opened up not only pathways for diplomacy, but perhaps most importantly, open up pathways for the United States to bring troops home from the Middle East. If you listen carefully to what Biden said during his trip, it was he was saying, we're here to stay. We're not going to leave. Well, guess what? The American people want to leave the Middle East. They don't want to have this high level of military troops in the region because it entraps the United States into more wars. So 
uh, I, again, it, it's a mystery to me why they have chosen not only a path that hasn't worked, but also one that clearly is rejected by the American public. So let, let's actually talk about the president's trip to the Middle East a little bit more. The president actually came in for some criticism, specifically for first promising to reduce contact because of the pandemic and then shaking hands with former Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. And then he got into hot water for not shaking hands, but for a fist bump with, you know, Saudi Crown Prince MBS after promising to be tough on Saudi Arabia following the murder of Jamal Khashoggi. Um, but as you say, Doctor, um, Biden doubled down on the importance of a U.S. alliance in the Middle East while in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia on Saturday. So let's watch a clip and then we're going to get your reaction to that, Dr. Parsi. Let me state clearly that the United States is going to remain an active, engaged partner in the Middle East. As the world grows more competitive and the challenges we face more complex, it's only becoming clear to me that how closely interwoven America's interests are with the successes of the Middle East. We will not walk away and leave a vacuum to be filled by China, Russia, or Iran. Hmm. What do you think about that? Well, first on the fist bump, I think that whole episode is frankly embarrassing. I can imagine it being like a bad episode of Veep in which the advisors are debating with each other, should they fist bump, should they use the elbow, should they handshake? And as you can imagine, it just, develop disastrously. But on the core, which I think you have to say, this is more important. You know, the fist bump is going to get a lot of attention. And I think it was embarrassing about But the bigger issue is, you know, after last year saying that this is withdrawal from Afghanistan marks an end to an era of regime change wars and disinvolvement in the Middle East, he's now back, hat in hand, in Riyadh, an embarrassing fist bump with a uh, Crown Prince of uh, Saudi Arabia, which he had said he would not meet with at all just a couple of weeks ago. And he's now promising that the United States is going to remain engaged in the Middle East. Now, let me be clear. The U.S. remaining engaged in the Middle East diplomatically, trade, absolutely uh, uh, a good thing for the United States to do. But what he is talking about, or at least what the audience there is listening for, is not trade and diplomacy. They're looking for America's military commitment to the Middle East. And that, again, is a commitment that the American public has turned against and something that Biden himself had turned against just months ago. So the question really is why this embarrassing turnaround, not just with a fist bump, but with the core of the policy of the United States going back militarily into the Middle East. Hmm. Well, Dr. Parsi, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. And we'll be back with more Rising right after this.